The CSIT 20 Challenge has kicked off and we've already seen two victories, one for the Warriors and one for Western Province Blitz. So I thought it would be a, a good day to start chatting about who the younger guys are in the tournament that we are interested in seeing and have a discussion about it because it will be a nice way for us to keep an eye out on the young talent in South Africa, how they cope against more senior players. There's a lot of senior guys in this tournament. Some proper, proper cricket's going to be played. Already the opening two matches were some some good cricket uh, on display from both teams, um, from all four teams that were involved. And I think that the tournament, this is going to say a lot for the rest of the tournament. We saw some spin-up front um, early on. Of course, in these first two games already, we saw some spin happening. So uh, we can only assume that the pitches are going to deteriorate over time. Um, and we, the, the, the spinners are going to come into play a lot more. But we will talk about the youngsters in this particular tournament. We will talk about the guys that we're looking forward to on this show. And that's what the show is going to be all about. Um, I will give a quick summary of what happened in the match. If you guys are interested, if you haven't uh, taken a look yourself to see what took place and what happened in the first two games, then I'll give you guys that quick summary um, very soon. So let's get straight into today's content. Really excited about this one. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click that notification bell for all future videos as well. But don't forget to smash the like button too and comment in the comment section. But also subscribe to Cricket Fanatics Magazine monthly. Every issue is 100% free straight to your inbox every single month. You can do that by clicking on the link in the description. So without further ado, guys, let's get straight into today's video. A very good evening and welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show. I'm your host, Khalid Mohidin. This is my co-host, Aditya, and today, Werner, as well. And today, we're going to be discussing the youngsters that we are looking forward to see in this particular tournament, the CSA T20 Challenge. So, it started today. There were two games that, that took place. It was The first one was Western Province Blitz that took on the GBS Rocks in a derby. Um, and it was the Western Province that ended up beating the Blitz I mean, the Blitz beat the, the Rocks by six wickets. Um, in this particular game, uh, the Rocks' top players, you would say, Peter Milan, Yanaman Milan, those guys never really came to the party with a bat. And I think that's where the game was eventually lost, I feel, because there was some good fast bowling up front from Buren Hendricks particularly. Um, he, he bowled quite well. But ultimately, it was... The only if Christian Jonker putting on 46 or 43 balls for the Rocks is where the games, um, the game kind of changed. You know, um, it, it, it was it was there that the Rocks started putting on a decent total, and with Fariska Adams as well, um, where I feel Fariska Adams also did quite well in this particular match as well, um, and George Linda bowled excellently too from us from a from a bliss perspective. But the star of the show in this particular match was definitely Richard Levy, um, 67 of 39. Um, there was nine fours and three sixes that he that he hit. And Aviva Majima was excellent as well, 26 of 17. Um, they, uh, he helped them chase a, a target of 143 with three overs to spare. Um, so that was what took place in that match. Then it was the Titans versus the Warriors. And the Titans has been tipped as one of the favorites for the tournament. Uh, generally speaking, um, it was something that people obviously um, were looking forward to seeing because obviously we had the likes of Kwanita Cock before batting in this particular game as well, uh, which everybody was excited to obviously see him play uh, domestic cricket and, and tear things up. But with a bat, it didn't go his way, um, obviously going out for a duck. Um, so it wasn't really his day, I would say, with a bat. Um, but Donovan Ferreira is one of the guys, maybe one of the youngsters that we maybe we wouldn't really call him as young as the other guys on the list that we will be talking about today. 
but um, someone that has been in and around the, the domestic scene when it comes to T20 cricket specifically. And he has made a name for himself um, in this particular, in, in previous tournaments. As we know, he's also been in, he's also in the, in the um, RPL list of players that have, have put their names in the, in the auction. Um, so that is something that we, we can also maybe this, we've, we've, that we've spoken about before. But for this match, um, particularly the Warriors match, I would say hats off to Vian Lubber, um, 56 or 46 with three fours and two sixes. And of course, Tristan Stubbs as well, once again, um, putting on a, a good performance with the bat. Actually, he won um, batter of the match in this particular game. Um, he came in at five, Tristan Stubbs, 51 of 27 with four sixes and one four. Um, Vian Libbo also contributed well with the ball. He got two for 15 in his two overs, but John John Smuts ended up um, getting the bowl of the match for this particular game with his spell of one for 12 in his four overs, which was a good return by him. But ultimately, um, the Warriors won by eight runs. It was a game that went to a wire, particularly because of Donovan Ferreira's performance. And we've got two wins, um, wins for the first game of the of the of the tournament, first two games of the tournament so far. But this show is all about the youngsters, and I would like to hear from you guys, Aditya and Werner, who are some of the guys that you are looking forward to seeing. I think let's start with you, and then if maybe anybody was missed out, then we can maybe add some special mentions. Um, I think Tristan Stubbs is, is a serious talent, and uh, <laughs> and uh, Vian Libber obviously has, has has done quite well. And I think from a national team perspective, he is he's a serious contender because you know he contributes with bat and ball. So I think these are these are certainly talents that I'd like to see. I don't know, I think Devold Bravis is slated to play in the tournament as well. Uh, yeah. So I'd like to see how his um, T20 game is, yeah, you know, given that he's going to be full of confidence and um, he's got uh, the 360 game to to succeed. So, mm. yeah, I think these are these are certainly some some talents that uh, that I'm on the lookout for. Um, I think Vanna mentioned on Twitter that Donovan Ferreira has the potential to be a finisher, and. Uh, um, yeah, I think that'd be interesting to explore, given that we've talked a lot about five, six, and seven in the white pole setup for quite a while. So if if he can be groomed into that position, it'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. So Werner, before because I know you know all the names, so I'm just going to rattle off to the guys, uh, and and then you can maybe add a few that we maybe missed. But the list that I put together was Deva Previs from the Titans, 18 years old. Um, got I can't hear you. There's no sound. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can. All I'm saying is don't say all the names. Leave me one or two. <laughs> okay, um, let me leave you one or two. Okay, so let me let me Deva Previs has been mentioned. Um Tristan he's 18, plays for the Titans. We've got Tristan Stubbs at the Warriors, 21 years old. Bryce Parsons at the Dolphins, 20. Uh Gerald Kutsia, Knights, 21. Um, maybe we can throw in Josh. I'll just name one from each then for for, for now. Uh, Joshua Richards, Lions, 23. Um, we've got Jonathan Bird at Western Province, which we're hoping to see the real John O'Bird this season. He's 20. Tuan Janssen at Northwest. Uh, Marco's brother um, is 21. Um, so that's basically one of, from each, I think. I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, that's one from each province. Um, any other notable mentions over there, Werner, that you want to add into this? <laughs> um yeah ferrara is actually still quite young he's only 23 so I, I i'd count him as a youngster still um and look i'm actually looking forward and and looking out to that ipl auction i think he might be a wild card pick for one of the teams and i he might surprise a few um if he does get a get a pick i wouldn't mind him seeing him there um i'm also looking out for gerald kutsia uh michael pretorius um, Shane Dadswell is another one I'm looking out for because he's also a very destructive batsman. We haven't seen the best of him yet um, at the Lions, but I think if he does get a proper opportunity, he's going to hit a few big blows. 
Um, who else? He's and uh, Guepe. He's not that young anymore, but I'm looking forward to him. Imran Manak. I've enjoyed his bowling quite a lot. Um, but you've mo mentioned most of the youngsters I wanted to to mention. Bryce Parsons. I think you mentioned. Looking forward to seeing um, what all round contributions he can can make. I was actually um, quite pleased to see uh, Donovan Ferrer bowl today. So it's good to know that he. You can bowl one or two overs as well. That's that's another thing that can get you um, higher honors if you can contribute all around. So yeah, mm. yeah, it's interesting to hear you like elaborate on that because we've got some guys that maybe are more familiar. Um, obviously we know Michael Mikey Copeland. We're not sure if he's going to get a game at the Rocks, um, but he's in that squad. Um, Chromla Hanabe as well is a very good talent. I'm wondering if we're going to see him play as well as so we could keep a batter. Uh, Tando and Tini at the Dolphins is one twenty one years old. We tend to forget about about him because he's moved around quite a bit and he seems like he's been in the system for so long so but he's only 21 years old and then we've got Reina van Tonda at the Knights 23 hoping that we will see him uh, a lot more and I have to give some props to Matthew Bredsky now his 20 T20 game has developed over the years and and then you can see that he's focused on his game and his and his mentality um looking to score around the ground which is very good to see very unlucky to go out today um, but he's another one. And then obviously the normal names we know, like Yanaman Malani, etc. Proteus players already. So um, it's going to be a very interesting tournament and I'm looking forward to seeing what will happen. But for me, Tristan Stubbs, once again, he's, he's just shown his, his, his capability. I mean, I would love to see this boy get more opportunities, um, maybe for SAA. It's a pity that our SAA and the SA emerging teams don't play, play a lot of white ball cricket at least. You know, I would like to see them play a lot more white ball cricket so that we can give more youngsters opportunities in that format because we hardly ever see us our teams our SIA teams or emerging teams play cricket and and it's a, it's a huge travesty i feel because that's where they're really going to get tested against the best around the world or the second best players around the world um and and that's very important to have that and maintain that i hope that they continuously do look for that <clears throat> but for a youngster in this tournament um Let's go with you first. I'll ask both of you the question because maybe you'll have different viewpoints on both. Um, so when it comes to a youngster in a tournament like this, what do you want to see from a youngster, Adicha and Werner? Um, what, what are you looking for from them? Uh, is it is it adaptability? Is it um, just them playing their natural game? Like if you were in charge of a couple of youngsters, I know coaches their minds mentality is all about winning and first and foremost is about winning but if if you were looking at a couple of youngsters now in this tournament what what will you be looking for uh, certainly how they how they adapt to pressure and uh, what their performances are like when when the team really needs it um, in in addition to that you want to see how they how they display their skills, you know, what their strengths and weaknesses are, um, what their body language is when the team does well or when the individual does well, what the body language is like when um, the individual doesn't do well. Um, so all of all of these factors are, are important. And certainly in whiteboard cricket, you know, where there's so much cricket played that, you know, from time to time, individuals are going to fail you know so how players adapt to failure is is very important um in fact there is um, there's a there's a short story related to that uh, in 2011 when uh, i think virat kohli was all of uh, you know 22 23 uh, ray jennings was having a conversation with him along with uh, the owner of rcb and said to him that that Virat is the only player that they're looking to retain for the IPL. So Virat Kohli, a young 22, 23-year-old guy, tells Ray Jennings and the owner of the team that he will let that they should only retain him if they'd let him bat at three. He wanted more responsibility. And um, I think that's certainly a desirable quality that, that you'd like to see in youngsters. Yeah. Um, yes, adaptability is definitely important, but I'd, I'd just love to see some flair from the youngsters um, in this tournament. 
I'd like to see more of the coaches approach the, the Robbie P Warriors type of mentality there. Go out and express yourself. Try to be attacking as attacking as possible. Um, don't be reckless. Uh, don't lose five wickets for two runs, but try t- in every situation to be as positive as possible. Um, not just accumulate runs and then try to hit out in the last four overs, but try to be as positive as possible throughout the innings. And it was great. To, it's always great to see them um, play that way in this last two seasons, especially. I've enjoyed the Warriors cricket probably the most from all the teams, um, even though they don't have all the star players like the Titans have or the Cobras have or the Lions have. Um, they really play as a unit and they play with one goal in mind. Um, and I really enjoy that. And the way Tristan Stubbs played today is brilliant because um, obviously he took that on board, that mindset, but that's his natural um, way of playing in any case. So it, it's, it really fits into the way he wants to go about things. And um, I also enjoy the way he plays spin very much. Um, I, like they said on commentary as well, the fact that he um, was has also played hockey um, growing up um, makes a big difference in, in playing the sweep shot, just like A.B. de Villiers used to do it, and he grew up playing hockey. Um, you could see how comfortable he is playing the sweep shot. Somebody like maybe Aiden Markram does play the sweep shot these days, but he doesn't look as comfortable, and he doesn't always pick the right length to play the sweep shot. But you can see st- that stops his go-to shot against the spinners and how effective he is in playing it all around the ground. It doesn't have to be square leg or mid-wicket or fine. He, he, he can play it in any... Um, direction he wants to and that's such a big big weapon in in against the spinners in general and in t10 t20 cricket especially when you're looking to attack um it is so so important but if, and the, i think the fact that he took on shamsi today makes a big statement for the tournament going forward you're still on mute Khalid. There's also something that I really want to see, um, and maybe that's also a, big, a South African thing. Maybe that I think is that creeps in, and when it comes to sp- particularly guys that are batting um, at the end of at the end of an innings, particularly. So looking at Donovan Ferreira, I feel that the only criticism I can give, and it's something that I criticize a lot of batters, including David Miller and other finishers as well, is about farming that strike especially when you've got a new guy at the end. My, my main thing is that whether the guy can bat or not is irrelevant. And like we know Corbin Bosch can bat and he's, he considers himself an all-rounder. But when he's coming to the crease and he hasn't faced a lot of balls yet and you have an in-batter that is smacking the ball and seeing the ball like a beach ball, then surely he should face majority of the balls and give him his chance the best opportunity to get over the line and i think that's maybe one mistake that donovan might have made in this match um because i feel that at one point it was very winnable and very reachable for the titans um when when donovan was still at the when donovan was at the crease so i would have liked to see him obviously just and i would like our south african batters to maybe consider that when they're batting um yes it's a risk but the reward is much greater by taking that risk than the other way around. Um, losing a wicket in that situation when Aaron Pengiso came in, losing his wicket, Kevin Bosch losing his wicket, it puts a hell of a lot of pressure on the op- on on the team and it slips your chances away. So I would like to see them obviously just hold their end a lot more when there is a batter in form that he's seeing the ball and he's already doing well. It's a different situation if David Miller comes in and there's another batter that walks in the same or, or a big hitting all rounder that walks in at the same time and they both haven't really seen the ball and they want to rotate and move the the ball around and give it go for the responsibility that i can understand a lot more but with regard when it when there is a in batter in i would like to see that um mentality creep in where we say you know what i'm going to take majority of the strike here whenever you get the opportunity get me on strike um that is something that i feel that they should do before we close this off, I just want to say, just want to mention the, the New Zealand squad. Um, the New Zealand squad has been announced. Um, as we know now, Kane Williamson has been ruled out of the tests, um, recovering from an elbow injury. Tom Latham will replace him as captain in the absence of Kane Williamson. Trent Bolt will miss the first test. Um, he awaits the birth of his third child, while Ajaz Patel um, 
could also be added in the second test depending on conditions as well as his recovery from the left calf injury that he's that he has so the squad um i think someone posted it in the live chat as well so i might as well just posted from here from your chat it's new zealand squad for the first test is latham um, blandel conway de Grandom, fletcher matt henry jameson mitchell nichols uh, ravindra rutherford saudi tickner wagner and young so that is the squad um for the series against south africa um particularly um, we have to mention Cam Fletcher and Play Tickner, who have earned their maiden test calls ups, and Colin de Granum and and Hamish Rutherford have been recalled for New Zealand's upcoming test in Christchurch. So, yeah, that's the squad. That's a little bit of the news that we have over there. Um, we know about South Africa's situation, so that is cool. Um, anything you want to add before we say bye to the fans? Um, Aditya and Werner. Werner, you can go first. Um, I'm looking forward to this tournament. Uh, it's going to become quick, thick and, thick and fast, uh, two games a day. So it's going to be entertaining. Um, and I look forward, I know the Titans lost today, but I think when Brevis comes in, and I, I believe they're already, at least Copeland I saw is already in, in PE or, or Herberga or however you pronounce it. I, I'm still struggling with it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not good. too bad. I, it's not yeah. too bad. Um, yeah, so... I think if Brevis comes in, they'll probably shift Kluta out and and um, and shift uh, Dennis Brain up to open and get Brevis in at three, um, and then that that's going to make for an interesting lineup with with Brevis and Clausen and Donovan Ferreira in that middle order. It could get, be quite destructive, so it'll be interesting to see. And it, I hope they do um, use Brevis's leg spin as well because we all know that on that PE surface or that that surface um it, it it can be very useful to have a leg spinner you saw the way um vian leber and uh, smuts ball today how effective it can be so i think he, he would be a very good addition to the side um even if he's so inexperienced just having that option of, of bowling an overall or two could be very useful and i'm looking forward to the tournament as well seeing some of the other teams we haven't seen yet the knights the dragons um all the teams coming up, it's it's going to be interesting. I think the Knights are definitely going to uh, miss Riley Rousseau, who was so stellar last year for the T20 um, tournament. So um, guys like Python Bouillon um, will have to step up and, and fill that that role in the in the middle order. But it it, it should be a good one. Mm. It was interesting to see also Junior Dan. I'm not getting a, top, a chance to to bowl. If he's making Proteus teams, how does he not make the Titans team? It's gonna, it baffles me. Um, Ad, Aditya? Yeah, I think that the timing of this tournament is important. And among other things, I'm sure that um, a lot of people involved in the IPL auction will be watching this tournament. And uh, they'll be hoping to unearth some, some serious talent. Uh, in saying that, it's it's always delightful to see young players come to the party, and uh, let's hope that we see some some seriously exciting T20 cricket. It's interesting the Donovan Ferreira story because he was quite a wild card choice um, at the Mzansi Super League. Not a lot of people heard about him and heard of him before that, and. Uh, was a smart move to bring him into the setup and look how he's performing it's almost like a t20 specialist currently in south africa um so very very interesting he has smashed some bowlers for turkeys i've heard i've yeah. seen some scorecards he's absolutely demolished some players at that level so i think it's only warranted to to play at the yeah. I'd, I'd love i'd love for him to get more games than just the t20s i'd love to see him play in the one day cup i mean this guy has some serious talent and serious power he's only played like three list eight games yep and he's striking at 200 i mean give this guy a chance yeah i mean i'm all for giving youngsters an opportunity so guys thanks a lot for tuning in i think we've named majority of them there are some guys that we maybe missed out we will see how they fare in this tournament and we'll speak to them this is obviously only on previous assessments of us watching these players play so the list that we did give and we have mentioned um a, a lot of the players are based on what we've seen from those players before so we're hoping that some maybe some newer guys will be able to impress us as well in this tournament so that we can be speaking about them too. 
But keep uh, updated on clickfanaticsmag.com. We will keep you up to date with what's happening in the tournament. Um, and stay tuned to this particular channel. Subscribe and click the notification bell year two um, for all updates year two. We will do that as well. Um, so there's the button. Go ahead and subscribe. It's the big red button. You will be able to see it. If it's red, still it shouldn't be. <laughs> but we forgive you once you press it. That's 100% free. Go to also subscribe to Cricket Fanatics Magazine monthly. Every issue is 100% free. Straight to your inbox every single month. The link is in the description. It's free, guys. Doesn't cost you a cent. Just go ahead and do so. And to, to all of the guys that tuned in to watch, thanks a lot. Smash that like button, please, for us. Comment and share and do all of those things too. We'll see you again tomorrow with another daily show. It's going to be a busy day tomorrow. Um, I'm hoping to get an offside maidens um, back up and running today. Um, trying to figure out with the girls if they're available. But we will have a show at 8 o'clock if that is the case. So you guys stay tuned to this channel for more entertaining podcasts. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys again very, very soon. Peace.